Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video. Um, and in this game, Alpha Zero is black in the English um, and accepts double pawns in the opening, not once, but twice in order to gain open lines for its bishops and rooks. Alpha Zero is on trend and takes a no castling approach to this game, uh, sticking its king onto f8. That's right, keeping uh, e8 and g8 free for its rooks. Um, and there's uh, also a bit of a march of the rooks pawn thrown as well. So uh, let's have a look at the game. It's good fun. Welcome back. Let's dive into the game. It's uh, Stockfish 8 white against uh, Alpha 0. Um, and we're going to have a look at the game. It starts with Knight F3. Knight F6, C4. E6 and B3. So quite a, a, a slow way of playing. Um, but I, I've also played it with white uh, and I've also had it on the black side as well and uh, leads to interesting positions. Um, and uh, Alpha Zero goes um, um, yeah, quite directly for a variation that um, that's willing to accept um, isolated pawns. Um, so you can imagine you know, white can take on d5 and later play d4 and d takes c5 and, uh, and give uh, black an isolated pawn. But um, in uh, in this position, uh, Stockfish does something uh, interesting. Yes, yeah, Stockfish here plays knight e5 for white. And this is quite an unusual concept. What Stockfish is trying to do is double black's pawns um, and give black a weaker pawn structure. Yeah, it's um, I've played this with black actually. And I'd, um, I remember during the game, I idly wondered you know, whether white could actually uh, play this sort of plan, which is instead of playing d4, you know, and trying to get some sort of IQP or hangings pawn structure, um, just to give black um, uh, double pawns on the c file and then try and line up on them, you know, with uh, something like queen c2 and later bishop a3 or, or something like that, you know, it seemed very interesting. Uh, black looked pretty active, so I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, um, I wasn't, you know, hundred percent worried about it. But it, it did seem like an interesting concept, and uh, yeah, interesting that Stockfish comes up with it as well. In this position, Alpha Zero continues its approach of not being worried about double pawns at all. So Alpha Zero continues with Bishop F5, and this allows White to take on F6, and uh, Alpha Zero gets the bishop pair. Yeah, it's funny. I, I was, uh, you know, just whilst I was thinking about it during uh, during one of my games, I thought, oh yeah, I'll have to play queen e7 to defend the knight, you know, prevent uh, the double pawns. But uh, yeah, alpha zero doesn't worry about it at all. Um, and Stockfish takes the opportunity and um, uh, plays again a, a very interesting concept. Um, but again, it's it's very risky, I think, you have to say, because there's uh, um, a lot of weaknesses also taking part in the white structure. But white plays uh, this move f4. Which um, you know blocks the diagonal of the uh, of the bishop, you know uh, the uh, the b8 h2 diagonal in which the, the bishop and queen are lined up, takes control of um, of of, uh, of e5, and I suppose you know if you're looking at long term, white will be really trying to put a piece on f5, so get rid of that light squared bishop um, um, and maneuver the knight round maybe c3 to um, uh, c3 to e2 to g3, for example. You know, that will be uh, White's general plan. I mean, another plan, of course, is just play knight c3 to a4 and attack the pawn on c5. So, um, I mean, black um, <coughs> is, you know, it's got a, a decent position, but uh, obviously with all those weaknesses, it's got to find a, an active way to play in this position. Here, alpha <clears> zero <throat> comes up with the move king f8. Um, you, it's like no castling chess. You can see that uh, black gets some good open lines for the rooks. So, for example, the G line is open, the E line is half open, and a lot of activity for the black pieces. Uh, now, we have to comment, this is not the version of Alpha Zero that has actually been trained up in no castling chess. Uh, the ex-world champion Vladimir Kramnik has been working with Deep Mind and Alpha Zero on getting very strong at no castling chess. Uh, but here, this is our Alpha Zero that uh, that plays normal chess but is trying a no castling game. Exactly, and uh, <coughs> it is really effective, I have to say, um, because after castles, Alpha Zero plays H five. That's the one. Trademark Alpha Zero move. Exactly. I'm sure you're all shouting all that all that with us at home. It's um, yeah, it's uh, um, a lovely 
um, easy way to start creating um, um, just problems, seeing what uh, what you can uh, achieve on the king side. Um, White can take that pawn, but then, um, well, open files are opened against the king. So um, uh, Stockfish uh, chooses caution in this case and plays queen e1. And Alpha Zero is not going to leave that pawn on h5. It just keeps on going. It's going to go all the way. Rook on e8, just using the um, uh, that nice uh, active square that uh, that was freed for it by uh, by King f8, and now h3. So uh, g3, and uh, well, I mean, what has Black achieved with this pawn on h3? The White King's restricted. There's a lovely square on g2, and in an ending, that pawn on h2 could be very weak if a rook gets behind it. So, um, um, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the uh, the games that we saw that we looked at um, um, recently with uh, in our in our video series again showed you know the power of a of a pawn on h three and uh, the problems that it causes for um, uh, for for white in uh, in an end game. Um, so, obviously, we're going to play queen e seven. Stockfish played bishop f three, and now a very interesting move. Here, black played c four. And this was a surprising idea. Um, Alpha Zero is again looking to open more lines, and this is at the cost of a pawn. So Alpha Zero doesn't mind sacrificing a pawn to get open B line and open D line. Yeah, it's a, it's a. I mean, I was expecting um, you know in this sort of position to play for D four. Uh, somehow it feels natural. I guess because the queen's on E seven, rook on E eight. Um, You've got a dark square bishop. Uh, white doesn't, um, and you know d four will, will hopefully open up some more uh, some more lines like that. But this is a very fine idea, and it's quite striking that you know Alpha Zero's played pawn to h three, so on on the king side, and now it's trying to open lines on the um, on the queen side. You know, it's this whole board play all the time. There, you know, we commented on it quite a bit, um, but it, it you know it keeps striking you just how um, you know how true that is, and uh, how often Alpha Zero does it. And how well Alpha Zero does it. So, um, but it, this is actually a pawn sacrifice, and uh, Stockfish well, plays a4, slightly mysterious move. I think it was because uh, Alpha Zero didn't want to have a bishop coming to a3, you know, and uh, and blocking in its rook on a1. Uh, but Alpha, for Alpha Zero, that pawn on c6 is just not important. It plays bishop d3. And I think that here uh, Stockfish made an error in judgment. Um, it took the pawn on um, on c6. So um, um, I think the um, um, I think White's best move here was to play uh, Bishop e2, um, and yeah, I mean there, there are many different ideas, but um, for example, um, uh, I think you know something like f5 uh, takes takes um, Queen f3 something like this. It's um, it's not so bad really, you know. I mean um, um, Black's got a, a, a pretty good position, a clamp on White's position. But um, um, but it isn't very easy at all for um, for Black to make big progress. Um, after Bishop takes c6, um, you know that Bishop on d3 is really dominating stuff. And, um, uh, and in fact, Alpha Zero, I think that comes together with it. Alpha Zero finds a, an extremely strong and not very obvious regrouping that um, that really tips White's position over the edge. So the rook comes to b8, uh, rook to e1. King to g7, very typical alpha zero, just uh, consolidating the king before uh, proceeding further. Rook d1, um, very hard for uh, for Stockfish to get its uh, rooks into play. And now this uh, very nice move, bishop b4. And here uh, alpha zero thinks it's got a very good expected score in this position. Yeah, I think it was something like 78% uh, or above, and it just keeps on keeps on rising. Um, so knight b5, bishop a5, this is uh, the second uh, part of it. Bishop f3, queen d7, just uh, keeping control of some light squares, especially this weak um, f5 square. And then after g4, trying to gain some space, a6, and rook b2. And this is the whole point of this, um, uh, of, um, of alpha zero's regrouping. This pawn on d2 is incredibly hard to, uh, to hold, and at the very least c3 is coming in. You know, yeah. quite apart from anything else you could think of. Look at how much more active Black's pieces are than White. White's kind of cramped in a small part of the board, and Black can move its pieces freely all over the board. Yeah, I mean, it's um, uh, somehow you, you don't really realise how, but uh, um, yeah, strategically, just uh, Alpha Zero has just built up a, a massive advantage, despite all the double pawns. 
and despite the pawn minus, actually, it's uh, that's one of the things about Alpha Zero's games. You often don't realise it's uh, it's one or two or even three pawns down because its pieces look so good. So uh, Rook F1, yeah, Stockfish trying to uh, to tempt Alpha Zero to um, to to get rid of that uh, light squared bishop. For the moment, uh, um, uh, Alpha Zero isn't interested. It wants to get rid of that knight on D4, you know, which is uh, a very strong piece. I like this move very much. I mean, just A5. Fixing uh, the weakness on a4 so that it can be taken later. And Stockfish goes knight g3. And now alpha0 decides that uh, um, it is possible to uh, to uh, to take the um, the exchange. I mean, c4 to c3 is coming in, you know, at uh, all sorts of moments. So uh, the only thing you've got to watch out a little bit um, is um, there's a few little tricks based around the fact that that knight on f5 is very strong. Uh, the only problem is that white's position is collapsing. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, although the black king is a bit constricted and uh, the rook on h8 as well, now for zero will have to do a little bit of work to get itself um, um, free. There are well, just too many weaknesses really in the um, in the white position, you know, to uh, to be able to, to hold black for any period of time. So rook d2, bishop e4, c3, rook c1, and now king h7. Um, picking a good moment to move the king um, um, into a discovered check from the knight because the e3 pawn is uh, is hanging and after knight g3 f5 feels very sh feels very shogi like mm. really yeah you often uh, see these sort of uh, pawn sacks in shogi their pawn drops just to uh, to just get um, uh, pieces onto the on onto the wrong square and here obviously um well when the bishop takes with check then uh, uh, the knight can no longer go there so the king's safe and of course the king's also got a nice little square on on f6 if knight h5 check, well, you could even take that knight, actually. But you've also got a, a h6 as a square as well. So rook takes c3, rook e8. Now black's fully active. And then look look at the white king, that pawn on h3, pinning it to the back. Mm, um, that king's in trouble. That king's going to be in trouble. So, And that just means that, um, um, that yeah, you know, white, in terms of material, you know, white's got uh, you no know, two pawns for the exchange. But just in terms of pieces, uh, it's really rather bad in after here. Um, a couple more moves and uh, and Stockfish resigned. So there we are. I mean, I hope you in, you enjoyed that game. I, I, I thought um, I thought uh, some very interesting decisions. I mean, it was some uh, or just whiz back like that. I, I thought some very interesting play from opening play from Stockfish. Interesting concepts, um, but somehow um, um, Alpha Zero just reacted with you know maximum activity um, and uh, just put everything into um, exploiting and using the open lines. Um, and the, 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 the pawn break levers that um, uh, the Stockfish's play had given it. And uh, some of them are uh, very familiar, you know, from Alpha Zero here. And some of them, like this one, uh, you know, not at all obvious. I mean, really, uh, extremely, uh, uh, extremely good decision. And uh, yeah, I, I liked very much actually this um, um, this regrouping um, of the um, of the bishop. You know, just because uh, it, you know, it feels natural, we'll put the rook in or whatever. But uh, just the bishop in first of all, and then after some preparations, you know, the um, the uh, targeting of the d2 pawn, and uh, and somehow, you know, as Natasha said, White's cramped, and uh, and somehow has been strategically outplayed. You know, even though you can't quite put your finger on it, uh, quite how it's happened. But certainly that sacrifice of a pawn was key because it ended up, a white ended up wasting time taking it and the pawn proved to be of no importance whatsoever. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you haven't bought Game Changer, well, you know it makes sense. It's the ideal Christmas present. And um, otherwise, you know, um, uh, do keep on watching because we've got uh, yeah quite a few more videos planned. Thank you very much for watching.